Hey there, it is Dominic Steele. Good morning. It's Daily Bible Time. It's the 18th of April, Thursday morning, and a really interesting night. Last night I went along to a a function for Anglican Aid hosted by the Archbishop of Sydney, Kanishka Rafal, and uh, terrific to hear about the great work that Anglican Aid is doing in the 30 poorest countries of the world, Um, both um, bringing the gospel but also bringing social action and social justice and social um, help to those different communities. Now, uh, we're working through Lionel Windsor's book, Truth Be Told, these couple of chapters, a uh, couple of days on daily Bible time. And uh, we're up to the chapter of Lionel's book, chapter 11, on speaking the truth in love. And he's looking at Ephesians. And uh, you'll remember I, I mentioned, um, well, I mentioned this at the beginning of the pastor's heart on uh, yesterday or Tuesday. And I also mentioned it um, in the sermon on Sunday that... Um, I'd had a crash and burn question time on Ephesians 4. And so I was very interested to see what um, Lionel says uh, on Ephesians. And he zeroes right in on the passage that uh, was at the flashpoint for my discussion um, all those years ago. And I think is actually a flashpoint discussion that if we speak the truth in love, we'll grow up into unity in the faith. Now, interestingly, though, Lionel in his treatment here, he focus on what is the activity of speaking the truth in love rather than the outcome of unity in the faith. And I say, oh, that's a bit disappointing. But he deals with it properly in the next chapter where he goes to truth in 1 Timothy and deals with truth versus falsehood there. He does, does a little bit in this chapter and then especially in 2 Corinthians. Now, um, in the Ephesians one, the key issue is um, truthing in love or speaking the truth in love. Um, now, the passage is, I'll, I'll read it to you, so that we may no longer, it's Ephesians 4 verse 14, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves, carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness in deceitful schemes, rather speaking the truth in love. We are to grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ, from whom the whole body joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped when each part is working properly makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. Now, this is what Lionel Windsor says. Notice that just before Paul says the phrase, speaking the truth in love, he describes its opposite, false teaching or false doctrine. It's false for two reasons. Firstly, it's false because it doesn't reflect the truth about Jesus. False teaching distracts us from the truth about Jesus and so it tosses us and blows us around here and there. Secondly, False teaching comes from false motives, human cunning and craftiness in deceitful schemes. False teachers have false intentions. They're not seeking to draw people to Jesus Christ, but to catch us up in some other human concern of their own making. This, according to Paul, is what the immature body of Christ looks like, not firmly rooted in the truth of God, and so unstable and blown around by human ideas. And then, after describing false teaching, Paul goes on to describe the members of Christ's body speaking the truth in love. He's saying that believers should be speaking in such a way that is constantly informed by the key truth that matters, the gospel, and it involves speaking the gospel, speaking about the implications of the gospel, speaking in a gospel-shaped way. So, truth and love, speaking the truth and love, are not two competing principles. It's not as if you can have gospel truth on the one hand and love on the other, gospel love on the other. Rather, I love you so much I'm speaking you the truth. Um, Truth and love go together. Gospel truth is to be spoken in loving relationships formed by the gospel of God's love for us. This is Lionel Windsor. If we think we're loving someone by putting aside the truth of the gospel, the truth about God's love for us through Jesus in saving us from sin and death and raising us with Christ, then we're not being true and we're not being loving either. So um, community matters. Loving community matters. Togetherness matters. That's why church is so important. And a Christian who doesn't think church is important is actually, as Lionel says, a contradiction in terms. Because if you're not meeting with God's people regularly, you don't have real opportunities to be speaking the truth in love. We need church. Because church is the place where we, in a real and concrete way, speak the truth in love to one another. That's how Christ's body works and grows. Now, let me lead in prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray that we as individuals, we as a community, would be speaking the truth in love, investing into each other's lives, saying hard things where necessary to each other, but doing it from a motive of love. And we pray this in Christ's name.
Amen. Thanks for joining us on Daily Bible Time today. See you tomorrow morning. God bless. Thank you.